Today I want to delve a little bit deeper into compression ratios. So I want to kind of, sometimes we get confused about some of the parameters. Well, sometimes I get confused about some of the parameters in, in compression. But today I want to focus on just the ratio parameter. Uh, I'm going to use a song by my friend Cozy. Uh, his group is We Are Remix. Now, there's different ways to think about what ratio does. One of the ways I like to think about it is I've got a I've got a ceiling, and this ceiling is imaginary. That ceiling sound is trying to bump up against this ceiling. Now, they can go past the ceiling. Now, the ceiling represents, in my mind, the threshold setting on a compressor. Now, not all compressors have a threshold setting. Well, that's another subject. Now, what ratio does is, is if I've got a sound, and I set my ratio of 2 to 1, for every 2 dB above threshold, the ratio says bring it down 1. So if I go 8 dB above threshold, it brings it down to 4 dB. So you can, you can see if I increase the ratio, like say to 16 to 1, every time I go 16 dB above threshold, it would, it would bring it down to 1, or 32 would bring, would bring it down to 2. So lower thresholds allow more to, no, lower ratios allow so a lower ratio allows more dynamics to take place above threshold i guess i guess this is you should say it, it, it allows more dynamics to take place period so in my mind i think sometimes uh lower ratios crank down the threshold so I get more happening above the threshold but, but at a lower ratio. Sometimes I like that combination on stereo buses. Sometimes on basses I might use a more drastic ratio like like 8 to 1, 12 to 1. And I'm going to show you today on a vocal what happens with a couple of different thresholds, a um, couple of different ratios in terms of the feel and what we're trying to do. So. If, if we're trying to keep something within a certain dynamic range, as the ratio gets higher and higher, we go into what's called limiting. So a limiter technically is a, is a compressor with a very high ratio. General consensus somewhere around a 50 to 1 ratio, you start limiting. And then what we call a brick wall limiter is nothing gets above threshold. There's a brick ceiling on that threshold so that so this, the ratio, I guess, could be infinity to one. <laughs> so, or did I say it backwards, one to infinity? Anyway, look it up. You guys got to do some work yourselves too. So let me show, let me play this 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 example and show you something. While this is loading up, I want you to notice on the screen this little chart. Now this is what happens on the classic DBX one sixty XT compressor. I was wondering why is it that I can't get my plugins to sound like it. Now this is interesting because the attack time is program dependent. So if, depending on how many dB I'm knocking off, the attack time changes. The release time is program dependent. Copy this because these will allow you to get some really cool drum compressor sounds because the DBX160X is is thought of as, by me anyway, is thought of as a great drum compressor. Now here's here's a basic compressor. I'm using a little slower attack time. Um, we've got a ratio of around two to one release. I'd say a little bit on the longer side. And we're, we're gonna set the threshold to just knock off a couple of dB. Let's check it out. When you see me coming alive, when you see me coming alive, when you see me coming now what you heard was the word when has to have that attack on it and with, if we if we smooth that word out we lose a little bit of the energy and then you see is kind of tucked in a little and then coming alive is another important energy word so I'm using a two to one ratio so focus on the emotion and feeling we're feeling in that two to one ratio when you see me coming alive when you see me coming alive. 
Now let me take the compressor off and focus on the same concept. When you see me coming alive, when you see me coming alive, when you see me coming alive, when you see me coming alive. I think it must have gotten a tiny bit louder, but you guys are sophisticated. You can substitute in your head for that little extra volume. So what I'm hearing on the compressed version is the wind, the wind came down, coming came down, and it, it came to a closer level to uh, the other words, and now we turn the wind and the coming back up to the original level where they were, and now we've brought with those words the level of the other words. So we, we tried to keep the dynamics and the importance of that energy in those two words, wind and coming, but we've gotten the other words up to start contributing a little bit to the energy too. Now as we increase the ratio we get them all more even but when they're even there's nothing to impart that energy that that dynamic range and is contains the energy so let's see let's see if we can hear when we lose that. When you see me coming alive, when you see me okay, focus on this number right here this ratio number Did you feel the energy kind of go away? If you didn't, don't worry. You know, some of these things uh, take a minute to, to hear. Just play that reference over and over again <clears throat> and, and, and really train your ear to focus on, on the energy and the emotion in that line. There's a little tiny, it's not a crack in his voice, but it's a little tiny uh, Michael Jackson little thing that's going on there. So we don't want to destroy that. There's a lot of sound there, so we don't want to destroy it. might take you a couple of tries to hear it, but uh, don't get discouraged. You, 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 you can hear it, but more importantly, you want to feel it. I get asked a lot, should I put my equalizer in front of the compressor or after the compressor? The basic rule of thumb is, if you've got a frequency that's causing the compressor to do things you don't like, then put an EQ in front of the compressor and take that frequency out. For example, in a vocal, if you've got a lot of low-end muddiness actually affecting what your compressor is doing, put something in front of the compressor, roll that out. It might be a little bit too much 2K, roll that out, and now your compressor is acting to different frequencies. You might ask, well, Dave, what's the difference between that and side chaining? Well, side chaining, we're concerned um, with the equal with the compression of certain frequencies here we don't want certain frequencies certain frequencies to affect the compression and if you if you put the equalizer after the compressor what you're doing obviously is EQing the compressed signal when would you do that sometimes with some attack times you might get you might take too much low end out of your kick drum um, I tend to keep the attack times on my kick drums a little on the high side, uh, 30 to 50, somewhere in there, and that gives me a little bit more low end. And if you've taken off a little bit of low end from the compressor of the kick drum, but adding a little bit of the attack by doing that, then you might want to add a little bit of low end back into the compressor. On some of the side chain stuff I've shown you, the side chain uh, track, I compress the snot out of the drum and if on a kick I lose so much low end I'll take a, an API 550 or a pull tech and I'll drop that in after the compressor and add those low, low frequencies back. Always remember compression can add to the experience of a, of a particular track and a, and a body of music or it can really take away from it. You're, you're, you're squeezing more into a smaller space which can be a good thing but you're also squeezing more energy into a smaller space and nothing's jumping out at you. So uh, play around with it. It's, it's some, for some of you, this is going to come really quick and easy, and some of you, it's going to be a little harder to hear. Me personally, compression was the last thing I really felt like I nailed in terms of my growth. So 
don't get discouraged and experiment 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 you've got so many options now in in your DAW uh, that you can really use presets see what other people are doing and um, let me know how you're doing okay all right